you would like to call the fact checker, the number is 714-740-7037. So, speaking for Pro is Andrew Hansen from Corona Del Mar. And speaking, <laughs> speaking for Con is Kevin Condi from Corona. <laughs> uh, okay, so first up is the main uh, Pro speaker, Andrew Hansen. Oh, can you put these at the very first part? Hey right, guys, I woke up this morning. I was wondering what could be worse than waking up on a Sunday morning to talk about an SAT. And then I realized that taking the SAT on a Saturday morning is much worse. Alright, so I'm arguing that the SAT is pointless, unfair, and downgrading. It's pointless because it has stupid questions, such as in math on the 2006 SAT, M is a set of consisting of finite numbers of consecutive integers if the median of the numbers in the set M is equal to one of the numbers in set M, which of the following must be true? The average arithmetic mean of the numbers in M equals the median. The number of the numbers in set M is odd. The sum of the smallest number and the largest number in M is even. Now, who cares about M? Colleges do. College, colleges know that M determines how few you are going to be in college. Another question, let's think about English. Okay, select the answer that best corrects the sentence. However, comma, my grandpa could punch in the time and channel of his favorite news program. A, no change. B, additionally, comma, grandpa. C, conversely, comma, grandpa, or just grandpa. And I'm wondering, who cares about grandpa? Well, the Board of Education says that grandpa should determine who is going to go to college. Now, the college or also things that uh, the SAT is a great, great test. Okay, so in 2014, we're going to apply this uh, program called Common Core. Common Core is going to take out standardized testing for most public schools in California. We're going to replace it with Socratic seminars, critical thinking, and essays. By limiting standardized testing, we're giving an even playing field and limiting those test anxieties and stuff like that. And they're going off this idea called Bloom's taxonomy, which is basically saying that tests are low rigor. My next point is that SATs are unfair. They're unfair because you get tutored. Say, for instance, Kaplan. Kaplan guarantees a 200 point boost just for paying for their tutoring sessions. What if you can't pay for tutoring? Another idea is that you can cheat. There have been many incidents where somebody will fake their ID, go in and take a test for somebody else. And they can't guarantee that. You can't guarantee that it's to be equal playing field once taking the test. Another thing I mentioned was test anxiety. What if you have immense test anxiety and you can't take the test to full capability? My next point is that's downgrading. It replaces you with a number. It replaces everything about you, who you are, with a number. It doesn't recognize your interests. What, for instance, what if you really like art? You can't say, you can't express your interest in art through the SAT. Another example is history, business, computer science, everything that you may major in all of it is not tested in the SAT.
Um, so with this same argument, are you going to say that eliminating GPA is also a good idea because it replaces people with a number? No. Because you need to get more holistic review. How many classes do you need today? I have taken six. Yeah, so you have six different topics. In the SAT, you have three. You have writing, critical thinking, and math. So I'm arguing that GPA is more holistic review, but that's not my argument. I'm just arguing that SAT should not be a major factor in college admissions. I'm not even arguing about GPA. Yeah, the problem with subject tests is that law colleges don't require it, so it's only to take it. But that city is mandatory. I'm not really arguing subject tests. Yeah, team. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Because they neutralize grade inflation and they level the playing field, which benefits everyone. 
everyone. With combined high school grades and the rigor of high school paper, standardized tests are an important tool for predicting college success. The college admission officers definitely want students they admit to succeed. Therefore, with the standardized tests benefit the college applicants and college admission officers, they should continue to be used in the college admissions process. May your to both now and the future. Thank you. And then also 
also. For example, you guys are all here for this conference or this debate, which is part of um, junior states. Now, if there's another student and he's taking the SAT and he gets 1930, but he participates in no JSA, no extra activities, he just goes to school, he goes straight home to studies, and he gets in. Do you think that is fair? Mm -hmm. No. Someone should be measured on how they can balance everything. I am, I have six office positions, and I manage four clubs, I'm taking five big fees. That's how I want to be measured. Granted, my SAT score is 1830, rank a percent to university. Not a score. way 
to determine how much work you can do your freshman year of college, what your homework load is going to be. It's nothing more than that, nothing less. I've talked to my uncle about it. He sent two kids, he sent two of his kids to college, three of them actually, so he knows what he's talking about. Um, also, a lot of things that they say, they're, they're coming up here and they're saying stuff like the SAT, they act as if if you pass the SAT, then you're set, you've got the golden roads ahead of you, but if you fail it, you're just banished to the doldrums. Well, that's not true either. When you look at it, the SAT's purpose is not to be a make or break test. Take, for example, the University of Texas, one of my number one choices, go Longhorns. Anyways, um, their, SAT, their SAT scores are designed to counterbalance or to add on and be a supplement to something like the GPA or something like something along those lines. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's supposed to be, it's not make or break. Um, also, without the SAT, there's no clear way. I have family on the East Coast. They go to boarding schools. They go to some they go to stuff like that. They go to schools where they have like six or seven point GPAs. There's no way. Oh, okay. I thought I heard something slam against the table. Um, there's no way to compare me to my cousins back east without a standardized national form of testing. So, also, they have strict guidelines regarding cheating. I don't know how many of you have taken the SAT before in this room. So they have... Okay, also, um, the SAT has very strict guidelines regarding uh, cheating. How many of you have taken it before? Wow, that's a lot. Okay, um, makes sense though. The SAT has very strict guidelines. They have the whole, you know, desks have to be three feet apart. They have to be X amount of feet. You have to surrender your cell phones. You can't, you can't, I can't even call my cousins on the East Coast, like I mentioned earlier, the cousins that I mentioned. I can't even call them and talk to them about how they did. I can't post it on Facebook. I can't do any of that stuff because the SAT is so afraid of people cheating. But people are going to cheat regardless. I mean, I heard a story one time about a kid who was a Spanish foreign exchange student who literally got a piece of white, uh, one of the little cans of white out. Somebody shrank a piece, an answer document from one of the tests. I don't know if it was the SAT. But they shrank it and they put it on the back as a sticker. So everyone in the class was like, hey, can I use my app? The point is, people are that creative. People are going to take the avenues like that to cheat. If they're going to do that, then we're not going to stop them. So I don't understand why we can legislate our way out of that. I don't understand how you can possibly think that. With that, I yield my time to the chair. Um, I'm in a prep course right now, and it's 
putting an economic burden on my family. I wish I didn't have to do it, but at my school it's very competitive and SAT scores are a really big factor. And it's something that people do to get ahead. And I just don't think that should um, help you get ahead. Um, so the college board definitely has good intentions. They want to create an equal test. And I think that there needs to be some sort of standard test to make sure that different people, like with different GPAs from different schools, can be put on the same playing field, but that they take some of that test. With that, I yield my time questions.
Um, the NCLV was something that was implemented in 2002, and it means that, that there's no child left behind. And all 50 states now use the SAT. And somebody brought up that it's unfair fiscally because you can't afford it. There's something called the library. The library has books and books of SAT work and computers. You can go on YouTube and study and research all those things and get fantastic scores regardless of your background. Another thing is in the study on Procon.org, 93% uh, of students did better in their classes because they did better on their SAT. Uh, one thing is, like, let's say, look at a kid in your class. Is there somebody who does really bad in school and gets a 2200? Does that really happen? Usually, the SAT does reflect your score in school. Um, the questions are also easy enough to learn from everybody. We have a student in our uh, school called Min. She's from China. And she's studying now junior year. And she's getting better every single day. She can barely speak English, but every time that she studies, she gets better. So now she has an equal opportunity to get into colleges. Uh, the, con broke, or the pro brought up that um, it's unfair because the classes that are used for the uh, categories, English, math, and reading, uh, are unfair. But is it really fair in high school, the classes that are chosen? We don't get to decide that. So from what we learn in high school, that's what we're really tested on on the SAT. Another thing is somebody brought up tutors. But you can get a tutor for any other class or any other part of your life, you can get a mentor. Cheating. If you want to cheat on any other test, you can still cheat. Now, like Bobby brought up before, it's really hard to cheat on this test. But ultimately, you can find a certain way. Anxiety. Somebody brought up anxiety. You're going to have anxiety for a lot of situations in life. And what the SAT is going to teach you is how to problem solve in those situations and how to time manage in that opportunity. Um, one more thing was race was brought up, but the question is, is it race or are you just working hard to get that grade? And is that just a statistic that occurs because of that?
just don't know you. The SAT and GPA is pretty much all that you have, except for extracurricular activities. And you don't want to be placed in a number, and that's terrible. Oh, and also, racism. People have said that racism is not part of it, but uh, for the California State Standardized Test, there is a box, and people have probably seen it before, it says, check this box, box if you are part African American or have some African American descent. And I yield my time.
whenever they look at you as a student, they need to see that you can meet their level of expectations in college. So without the SAT, you're missing a, a big, big component of that. Because it is an entrance exam. And it's just like the MCAT, it's just like the LSAT, it's just like the ISD, which you guys have, you guys have taken or will take in the future. And, and sometimes you do need the entrance exam, because they need to assess whether or not you can handle a quick and I need my time to share. Okay. Okay.
are now doing the uh, speed test debate uh, on uh, whether or not news uh, organizations should declare their political stance. No, now we're Do we believe everything that you 
says, as an authority, are they really an authority? If you go watch the news and it says that Coca-Cola is terrible for you, and it's based on this one study that says Coca-Cola causes you to grow purple hair, are you suddenly going to like decide that because news is an authority and I watch it on CNN that I'm going to stop drinking Coca-Cola because I'm going to get purple hair? <laughs> I'm not sure what the point of this only, only extreme situation was. Most of the time when we listen to the news and it puts a slant or a bias on something, we don't really see it. Like, most news media organizations don't say Coca-Cola gives you purple hair. They tell me that Obama's leaving by 4% of points instead of 3. They tell me that Obama, that Obamacare saves $1 trillion instead of 943 billion. And that's the difference between a news media organization that's biased and a news or media organization that's fair. And when you know that the news media organization is biased, you take it with a grain of salt. But when you don't know that the media organization is biased, you take it as a fact. And you need to inform people of the biases of news media organizations so they can have the clearest, most coherent information. America is a strong nation. We have to believe in our people. I've already said this. So by restricting and telling people that you have to know what the affiliation of the people are, we're saying that America isn't strong enough to decide what's important, what's a fact. So if we're saying that, hey, Obama is up by two points, no, he's really up by three points, I'm not going to believe him, I'm not going to look more into that, we have to trust in America and believe in its strengths. We're strong people, hardworking people who fight for our liberties, and we have to believe that we are able to find these things. We don't need to belittle America. He proposes to give you half of the information and have you figure out the other half by yourself. Even you must agree that's recorded. <laughs>
uh, then we would also uh, then people would start to watch things that they'd like to listen to, things that supported their views. That would lead to a greater divide and uh, get nowhere uh, as a nation. Okay. Part of the issue I see with that is that what is with the issue between fact and opinion, when you have people, as he is saying, going to one particular side, if you were to segregate it based on political inclinations, then I'm sorry, I completely lost where I was going to go there, but essentially the issue that we have here is that what is being portrayed as fair and balanced is hardly so. It is just counterbalancing to one side or the other. And if you are, if object, if opinion is being portrayed as objective fact, then yes. news media is not accomplishing it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now have the next round. Okay. Uh, Muslims in the evil Middle East. 
I don't know what it is. It's not hard to tell. Even more moderate uh, news channels like CNN, there's like clearly liberal bias. These people are intelligent people, or somewhat intelligent people, who are writing for these news media outlets. It's not that they do not, it's not that they're just so stupid they don't know the political view. Oh, yeah, I'd like to respond to that. So, how many people in this room would say that CNN is liberal? Okay, so how many people would say that NPR is liberal? Okay, so already in this room we have disagreement. Some people think that NPR is very much so in the center. Some people think that CNN is not biased at all. So I just, I'm, I'm just furthering my point that there's incredible disagreement and political, um, uh, your political stance is dynamic. I just like to point out that water is so political to you. All right.
So uh, the previous speaker mentioned something about you know, their rights, you know, their rights to be you know, not, not uh, like closer to information. And yet the FDA mandates that we have nutrition labels. I can look at my food and I have to know how many calories, how many carbs, how many proteins, how many fats, and you know, if I'm on a diet, I get to look at all the like, nice little FDA labels. And yet you're telling me that, that is that an infringement of their rights? Is it my right to know what's in my food? And in the same way, is it my right to know what's in my news and how biased it is? And you mentioned that, you know, I'm watching some like three times. Well, you know what? Regardless, if they're misinforming me, that's libel. Okay, so the thing is, um, is that right now in our government, we're really trying to, you know, achieve bipartisanship. And we're trying to say that, like, we're going to reach over the aisle and work and Democrats and Republicans and we're all going to work together. And this is so much, like, fattening the line between Republican and Democrat because it's literally forcing people to align with a certain party whether or not they agree with it. So let's say I want to determine it. I have no idea. I don't know enough. I don't have a biased news channel that I can turn to and say, well, this seems pretty unbiased. And also, Okay, I'm gonna say that later, but <laughs> but I don't then I don't need to choose a particular party to align with. I can use that. Moderate and independent are still political views, first off. And second off, she's saying that oh, sorry, I should have Mr. Point. Okay, they're political views, but they're not political views that would be represented should we make people label what parties they're representing. And it also forces a news station to say, I'm liberal or I'm conservative, and maybe they're not. Like, we're not like accounting for the small number of news stations that really do believe, like, we're not going to just make this subject to other people's interpretation. If you go on Fox News and ask Bill O'Reilly what you think this news station is, he's probably going to tell you it's liberal, even if it's moderate. So we can't make this something that like other people can just say, well, this is liberal, this is conservative, because nobody's going to agree on it, as was earlier Liberal and moderate are still political views, I still say that they still be represented. You know, there's nothing that prevents me from saying I'm liberal or moderate. And if they buy a and if they somehow say I'm conservative and I'm liberal, then you know what? They're still doing this little thing called Bible. Okay, but the thing is, is that there's no news station that we would be able to watch, even if we, like, I, okay, yeah, so let's say my political view is that I'm moderate, but then what am I going to watch? Fox? MSNBC? Like, I don't, and I'm not. Okay, hold on. Um, oh yeah, and it's not, it's, not as if, it's not as if there's no way for people to just like intuitively determine what somebody's political views are. If you say, well, yeah, this person's saying this about Obama or Romney right now, but they also earlier said this, which makes me believe that they are probably... Uh,
more on the right or more on the left, saying if you were a Republican source, then you had some liberal views, people would think that's Republican, so they could be misinformed. Well, yeah, but people okay, generally know what uh, Santa's are conservative, what Santa's are liberal. I mean, we actually have uh, party platforms that say what's, uh, what views uh, we support and what other views we support. So generally, you can kind of figure out what's conservative and what's not. Well, then, wouldn't that be then against this bill? Because if you generally know what it is, you don't need it saying this is going to be on the left side, this is going to be on the right side. Also, in stories, like in editorials, in newspapers, this is just for um, major media news outlets. So it could be just news. What about other sources that have their views and people might not know if it's left or right? Like you said, people inherently know. So we don't need to know if it's on the right or the left. That's going against your views, like your personal freedom. I mean, if you have a general understanding of what's uh, conservative and what's liberal, then you don't really need to know, you don't really need to say, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so, you don't really need to, uh, It actually does take a lot of effort. You have to set up a role to be a regulatory agency that has to uh, 
you can only figure out what's true or not once you've heard what the real information is. And you won't know what the real information is until someone tells you whether or not they're liberal or conservative in your bias, right? We are not perfect individuals. I don't necessarily know that, you know, this statistic they provided me is false, but this statistic is true. I don't have to, I don't necessarily know that because I'm not perfect. Ernesto, something. <laughs> <laughs>